Development is the process, the instruments, the actions for human transformation and self-realization. This is not esoteric. This is very fundamental to be understood. You know, development is not development of something. Development is development of someone. You know, so if it is development of someone, it means that we need to know who that someone is, what is he doing here in this planet, and how can we help this someone to fulfill his or her mission in this particular planet. This is true development. The rest is gross development, is material development. Okay, so development is the collection of instruments, actions, and processes for human self-realization in whatever form or shape or activity this person is to be. Shoemaker, cook, housewife, lawyer, you know, uh, someone who is cleaning the streets of Chicago, it doesn't matter. The central epicenter of development is your capacity to fulfill your own mission in this planet. The rest it's just going through this planet, and this is not necessarily development. Now, let me now move into the traditional way to answer this question, which is not what I believe in. First, there was a lot of attention on economic growth, that is to create a larger pie. This is capital accumulation. More physical infrastructure, more banking, more projects, more widgets, more this, more this, more this. We created an ocean of development equal to growth, expansion of the economy, that was all me, 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 and more, 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 more. And we are suffering from this fallacy because more is not better. Industrialization has created pollution. You know, economic development has destroyed the environment. Advancement has declined the betterment of many, many people. There are many small votes now that cannot take you know, the big wave and advance. The second part was economic, socioeconomic development, which was not only a concern about economic growth, accumulating, having a larger pie, but was concerned about how the pie was consumed. It was something about distribution. So we spent a lot of time in the 60s and 70s and 80s you know, addressing the issue of distribution of wealth, distribution of product, and so on and so forth. So there was a lot of attention to equity issues. Then we said this is not enough. You know, we, we not only need to focus on making the pie grow or distributing in a certain way, we need to be able to maintain a capacity for growth and for this distribution, which it came to the issue of sustainable development. It's not only about me, but it's future generation. It's not about my space by other spaces. When I say my space, I am using pesticides, is polluting your space, that's the other space. So it was not only about me producing pears with high levels of pesticides and agrochemical, but it was about the impact on other spaces. It was not only about one type of capital accumulation, like physical and financial capital. Sustainability was about other forms of capital, in addition to these two, which are human capital, institutional capital, cultural capital, and spiritual capital, you know, and natural capital, of course, nature. So we created this notion of sustainable development, which meant a balance among all these forms of capital. We cannot go too much to the extreme of physical capital because we destroy natural capital. We cannot conserve everything, you know, don't move on the natural environment because we have to grow on the physical or the human capital, and so on and so forth. This transition from growth to development, from development to sustainable development, has shown that we don't have a framework to deal with them simultaneously. They are intransitive, as they say in mathematics. If A is greater than B and B greater to C, that not necessarily means that A is greater than C. In other words, if growth is very fast and development is also picking up, doesn't mean that it's sustainable development. You know, it's not going to make it. Larger pie with different distribution does not ensure sustainability in the longer term. 
Now, what do we find today in the world? That we are focusing on growth. So we're very concerned about growth rates going down, China from 17 to 5, Europe from 3, 4, 5, 6% to 1 or minus 1, America, you know, below 1%. We're concerned about the pie. So nobody wants to be politically incorrect to really redistribute the pie we have. So we are not addressing issues of development, really, very little. Nobody wants to give Peter to Paul or Paul to Peter. This is something we, you know, cannot run campaigns, you know, against any group, you know. There, there cannot be groups that are worse off because people say, ah, well, a minute, you know, this is not correct. So we have a gap between growth and sustainable development because development is not working. Which part of development is not working? The social part, the human part, the institutional part. So the bottom line of development is the human being. And if it is the human being, then we need to empower the human being to do something. So my sequence is growth, development, sustainable development, empower development. You know, many, many years ago, I was talking to one of my bosses and, and we talk about the writing a book about the next stage for the world and we call it empower development. It was not possible, you know, to have all these norms, these rules, these markets, these organizations, this process of wealth creation with people that are disempowered. It's not possible. It's not possible to have the power only in a few hands in the corporate world or in a social class or in a caste and the rest waiting for some crumbs to come down. That's not possible. Again, this is very difficult because we are talking about material power. I need to eat, I need school, I need health services, I need water, I need housing. But also we are talking about inner power, the power of the self, your self-identity, your culture, who you are, where you are going, and whether the system helps you or breaks you back from getting where you think you need to be. This is the greatest frustration of the youth, for example, now that they see growth and all of this debate, they see development and all this debate, you know, and so on and so forth. And in the end, they don't see the space for them to become who they want to be. So the empowerment side on the inner side of them is gone. There's nothing there for them. And I think that the next stage will be empower development on several dimensions. One, inner and outer. You cannot have power without having inner power, wisdom. You, you can have a lot of power, but with no wisdom, it doesn't work. So there is an inner and an outer uh, dimension of power. Then you have the individual power and the collective power. You know, it's not only my power. My power needs to be inserted on everyone's power. I cannot live in a society where very few people have the power and the rest has no power. This is just a recipe for social instability and total self-destruction. People have to have power at the collective level. This is why many people are fighting the reforms of the international organizations, you know. What is the democracy at that level? This is why many governments in Latin America are moving towards socialism because the traditional power structures are not giving them, they did not give them the opportunity to self-empower the poor. So the poor now is electing governments that are very radical and people are very concerned, you know, because of the way they are behaving in the radical. But this populist movement in Latin America, in Argentina, in Venezuela, in Ecuador, in Bolivia, et cetera, et cetera, they belong to the people. The people are saying, look, this is some form of participation, some form of democracy, representative democracy, which we didn't have before. And they are not thinking only material, material being, you know, no. They need identity. They feel identified with those governments. Just look last week, the overwhelming majority of the president of Ecuador, very young economist, I know him for many, many years since he was a student of economics, you know, this person got an overwhelming endorsement, you know. And this is not about wealth because wealth might have gone up, you know, but not a lot. So people are looking at development with different eyes. So when, when uh, Martia Sen says development as freedom, He's hitting on a nerve, you know, uh, voices of the poor, which was done by the World Bank. And they say, well, what is important for you? 
empowerment, security, and opportunity. They didn't say money, money, move. You know, and so the issue is that people are not just looking for having or doing. That's why I come back to the beginning. Development is the collection of instrument incentives and actions to self-realize yourself individually and collectively.